can't believe what I'm reading, what I'm hearing on the radio. What you're doing. You knew how it was gonna go down. I sat right there and told you. Maybe I'm just realizing there's a difference between hearing about something in the abstract and seeing it splash across the front page in a newspaper. I don't think I go through with it. I... I don't... No, I knew. I knew as soon as you regained consciousness, I could see it. So what's the I fucking problem? You, I see who you were. A little boy who didn't have much, but who also wasn't angry about it. A little boy who shared, who laughed, who... who just enjoyed being. I wonder what happened to him. He finally realized how things work. Yeah, all his friends got killed. <laughs> Family. So. How many times was the orphanage vandalized by rednecks? How many times do we have to drive around asking restaurants for their leftovers because we didn't have nothing else to eat? Did we have to deal with racist assholes? Sure. But whenever they did some folks come around and help us. White, black, Baptist, Lutheran, you name it. You know how all you boys got new jackets on Christmas? Those came from an old white woman, a Calvinist. She spent the entire year making them. If all you ever look for is evil, it's all you ever gonna see. I gotta go. I... I never wanted this for you, Lincoln. I'll have a good life. Shut the fuck up. Ah, hey there, Flair. How is life running with her? I got it covered. Good. Because I'm getting where those Dixie Bousons are starting to interfere with our dwarfs. They can try all they like. Still won't change the outcome. I'm getting in touch with your artistic side. My wife used to draw on anything she could get her hands on. Half the time, she didn't even realize what she was doing. And yet, every stroke was... perfection. She's still back in Haiti? Yes. It is where she is buried. Yes, we all had our share of losses. Our losses, Frey, are nowhere near the same. I'm just trying to turn the page, set things right with you. And you think comparing the deaths of our loved ones will do that? Papa... Punch him in the face! Roger trying to locate me. He had the tonton I could bludgeon my children to death in order to save bullets. When I last saw my wife, her eyes had ruptured from the electroshock. My little boy, his face was caved in. And my little girl, she had been hit so hard she was decapitated. They were faultless. So you and me, Frey, we are nothing in common. Makano is an evil man. In that there is no question. But just because an evil man kills, it does not mean his victims are innocent. Innocence ain't a thing that exists around folks like us. At least not for long. Hell, I'm not even sure I know what it looks like anymore. I used to. Moss. But the bloody eye get the quick guy that picture fades. But that's not important right now. Important thing is getting our weed back from the Dixie Mafia. A large shipment of marijuana is at this dock. Get it and bring it back. Not worth as much money, but... Wait a bit. Oh my god! Come on! Uh, look at who decided to stop by. Thought you forgot about me. Running we takes time. That it does, Fred. Can't imagine what it must have been like running people. How many folks you think you got out of Haiti? I only remember those I could not save. Bullshit. When I was in country, once in a while we get a chance to evacuate a village before the napalm dropped. Wasn't our SOP, but we still did it. Had a couple close calls when the bombers showed up early. But I remember every single face. So how many were there? Forty-three. 
Should have been more, but some folks didn't trust us. Thought we were gonna march him into a shallow grave. Still remember the fear in their eyes. Nothing motivates quite as well as fear. Not a damn thing. So how would it? Yeah, I'm boring you. Two hundred and twenty-six. God damn. One boat every night for ten months. Mostly women and children. The men were either enlisted or disappeared. We had more refugees than we knew what to do with. They didn't always survive the trip, but dying on the bateau running from Papa Doc was better than the alternative. Sergeant Dixie Cox took a sound like Christmas morning by comparison. If you would have told me 15 years ago that all this would happen, I would have called you crazy. I believe I die an old man with my family all around me. Yeah. Not in this life, anyway. No. Not in this life. Keep winging in the marijuana for it. This is our life now. Go to this warehouse. Inside, there's a large stash of our wheat. Keep... Thanks for earlier. My old man used to be whip smart. If anyone tried to pull some shit on him, he saw it coming a mile away. Now, fuck. Now he barely knows the goddamn day of the week. Said you could use some help. Some of our bars are down the bayou. If you could get the shine from them and bring it back, it'd make my life a lot easier. Bayou you ain't exactly my favorite place in the world. Come on now, the redneck assholes that live down there just love it when black folks drop by for a visit. <laughs> She wants the D! Um, the small talk, but... Where you at with all this? All I really want is for everything to go back the way that it was. Poor Vietnam. Poor that night. Back when everything felt... Normal? At least our version of it, anyway. We are the righteously fucked. Danny. Was he in any pain? Did he suffer? No. Ain't nothing good coming from that. Who says I need good to come from it? Georgie shot him in the head. Looked like he went pretty quick. I hate this fucking town. I better go. Yeah. Okay. Lincoln. Just because Babiev is dead doesn't necessarily mean this neighborhood is firmly in our control. If he's still got any men hanging around, you should think about clearing them out. I'm doing any spawn back. Could have made this easier. Perfect timing. I was just about to have lunch. How'd it go? Fast cars and shine. Was not to like. Word coming down is that some motherfuckers might try to hit you. So watch your ass. Yes, ma'am. 
Guess who I saw coming out of the market yesterday? Denny McGill. No shit, Denny McGill? I haven't heard that name in years. Fucker's married. Four kids. Oldest Rachel is six. Damn. You imagine having four kids right now? Not without there being some kind of ransom involved. <laughs> Every time I run to folks like him, they start asking me when I'm settling down, when I'm gonna have a family. It always makes me feel like I don't belong. Like there's something wrong with me. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Hell, look at me. Never knew my parents, don't know a damn thing about who I am or where I came from. That hadn't stopped the world from deciding for me. He keeps finding people who don't give a fuck about any of that. Like when you and me are kicking back, shooting the shit. We just cool. Well, I'm cool. You, on the other hand, are a pretty big fucking dork. A dork? What are you, 12? Well, shit, those were the days. I could get shit-faced at night and still ace a math test the next day. <laughs> Listen, Lincoln, there's... Never mind. It can wait. Don't worry about what Denny McGill thinks. Fuck him. Yeah. Fuck him. Be careful out there. Danny fancied himself a race car driver. And he was damn good at it, too. But he hated these runs. Thought they were a giant bore. He took care of that problem by setting up races between the moonshine pickups and drop-offs. Stupid bastard always had to make things harder than they needed to be. Guess that's what they really mean by the luck of the Irish. Everything changes.